It's Dr. Lori. I'm in Blastonbury, Connecticut at the Goodwill. Come thrift with me. Oh, here's a little bunny rabbit bowl. That's cute. How much is this? So that says Nantucket on it. This piece, of course, is China. This piece has the figural bunnies. It's nice for a little candy. Not enough candy for me at Easter, but nice for little candies at Easter. How much do they want for that? They want two for that. Yeah, I'd say that's 10. So, and, and it's not, oh, it's listing. It's what people actually pay for these particular pieces. So that's what's gonna be important for it. The color will attract you, but the quality isn't there. So there you have it. Color's good though, right? And for $3, somebody will make some money off of this. But this is mass produced, see? Not a great glaze, you don't skip a glaze like that. Um, and crazing all the way up here, see all that? That's all crazing. So I would probably leave this. A lot of you would say, oh, I want it. And remember, it's what people actually pay for these pieces. Not, oh, what I think I might be able to get. This is from the 80s. These were all the rage in the 1980s. These little trinket, hand-painted trinket boxes, you know, unmarked, made in Japan with a little bow on it. They were baby gifts kinds of thing for a dollar. Today, they're worth about five. So we're, I'm getting some bargains here, but what have I been telling you about the revival of colonial American items and items from the 1970s? Look at that. Look at this image. This is part of a China set from the 1970s, right? Around 1976 with the bicentennial, right? So that revival of the American Revolutionary period or the colonial period. So this piece you're seeing is the night from the 1970s. Now it's coming back. In 2026, these kinds of images and these kinds of pieces are gonna be very desirable. They're gonna be, they're gonna spike in the market because it's colonial American stuff. So this is the platter for that famous set. It's $2. It is unmarked, so you have to be able to recognize it. What's it worth today? Today it's worth about 40 bucks. What's it gonna be worth? I've been tracing patterns of collecting and how much pieces go up in the market for decades. What's it gonna be worth in 2026? 100. So you've gotta pick this stuff up now so you can flip it later and make more money when the anniversary takes place. Let's see what else we've got. Right here, candle wick. So candle wick, very characteristic. You can see it with, again, the repeating pattern here of the glass, clear glass, and two pieces. So they're a little high, they're $2 for each. So if you're gonna get a great bargain, you know, it's gonna have to be there each $2, the big one and the small one. But these are really nice, they're very good condition. There's no scratches, usually you see big scratches on candle wick. So there's no scratches on these. Um, individually, 10 and $8. So again, if you're trying to match a set, if you're trying to add to a set or such, you know, you're going to see, of course, $10 for the big one, $8 for the small one. I would pick up both of these. What else do we see? Here's a Pyrex. You know, they're a little dirty. <laughs> but, you know, we all know we can clean this. And there's your mark right here. Difficult to see. There's your Pyrex mark right here. But these are functional and very useful. So for $2, there are people who will be thrifters who follow me who just say, I don't care what it is. If it's Pyrex, I'm picking it up. So. That's not a bad idea, I will tell you, because of the fact that these pieces for two bucks are gonna regularly bring, depending on the size and the style and such, between 25 and you know $75 for one. So I would hang on to that too. But remember, I put everything back for you, so you can get it. I don't wanna compete with you like everybody else wants to. So, you know, stamped out, junky buck, I'd leave that. This one's too thin. It is hand hammered aluminum, but it's very thin uh, from the 1950s. So it has some age, two bucks. It's worth about three. <laughs> so I'd leave that there. Um, a little bit more size. Here's hammered aluminum. All right. So here's hand hammered aluminum from the early 1950s after World War II. And for $2, it's worth 20. It's basically what you're looking at. Nice. Um, I like it. I like the, the elements here. I like the serpentine edge, right? This one, let's see if there's this one. Some people are taking pictures of me now, which is fun. Nice of them to say hello, which is all good. 
the, the yelling and screaming and the bells that you hear ringing, of course, are little children because people are shopping. So I'm trying to be as loud as I can so you can all do this and see what's what. And I will say hello to everybody once I get this thing unwrapped. I kind of hate to unwrap it. Well, it's wrapped in, in, in saran wrap. And you can see through it that it is a, kind of feel bad doing this. Uh, okay. Yeah, wow. The turkey tray! So this is a big turkey tray. Now there's a number on it. I think it was five. Oh, it's probably on the darn, there it is. I'm sorry, <laughs> making it not easy. So $5 for it. So it came in here wrapped. Um, but this is a nice turkey platter. Now granted, these designs are coming back big because they relate to the 1970s, right? So things like pewter and these types of elements, metallics are getting bigger and bigger. For $5, you can get 50 for this. So I like that's 10 times what it's worth. Metallics also from the 1980s coming back. These are these little hooks, see the little hooks to hang them on your wall? In the 80s, everybody was hanging these on the wall. Those are a dollar a piece, which of course are, are molds. You could use them for jello or cake or whatever it might be. $10 for the set of two, so $5 each. So those are nice too, I like these. And then, you know, here's a little cheese plate. You cut up the cheese. The metallics are big. They're big in terms of value. They're big in terms of uh, longevity. You know, they stay a long time, that kind of thing. So you're seeing all of that. Well, they put out more inventory. I always go through the second time. You go through once, you gotta come back and go through again because they're putting out new inventory. Let's see what they've got. How about this? Waterford Crystal. So there you go, new inventory, $2 worth 25. So new inventory, let's see what else. We've got this, these pieces. These are German, but they're old. They're finger bowls. You'd wash your fingers as you're eating, of course. Finger bowls made in Germany, hand-painted porcelain. There's your mark, and there's the name of the pattern at the bottom with the German mark. Typically, these are uh, French. Everyone says, oh, it's Limoges, Limoges, Limoges. This is that's good. Um, that's a nice piece. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So a dollar each for the whole set, you're going to get $8 each. So eight times what that's worth. How about this? You see this? This wasn't here before. And neither was the Pyrex, this nice Pyrex glass pie plate. I like blueberry pie. I've been looking for blueberry pie since I've been in Connecticut and I haven't found it. I grew up on blueberry pie and I can't find it. I don't know what's wrong. But here's the Pyrex pie plate, $3. This is a $25 pie plate. I, I'm telling you, picking up pie, Pyrex, always a good idea. And this piece is beautiful, $2, $2 for this trademark Limoges. Now this is transferware. This is not hand painted, but it's a nice transferware compote. You can put it in the middle of a dining room table or a, an end table. This is really very nice. It's in good, good condition. See, it's not any cracks or chips. You can still see all the decoration of the gilding on it. And then the mark on the bottom indicates that it is a nice porcelain. Nice porcelain. There's your trademark. Bright white clay. It's glazed on this side. It's decorated on the underside. $2. Do you know you, what it's worth? Do you know what it actually sells for a piece like this, which is made, of course, in France? This particular piece is a $60 piece for one. So it's a low, shallow compote bowl. You put fruit in it or you just make it look nice, and I'm leaving it here for you. So you got to make that second. They're bringing in more inventory, you hear them? So you gotta make that second pass. You know, you gotta come back and look again. So what else do we have? More china of the same type. So more very, very thin, beautifully thin pieces of German porcelain. This is even, I think, a little bit nicer. Also transferware, but it doesn't look like it was ever used. Looks like it just sat in the cabinet. So these are $4 to $6 each. Um, and there's four more of these. These date to the 1920s, 30s. I move this car at Goodwill and pick this up. You all should recognize that. You should not be able to pass by a piece of Theodore Haviland Limoges. You should be able to recognize it from all of these videos I've been teaching you what to look for. Yes, the mark, but also the dainty pink flowers, also the different designs, usually a little ribbon, Victorian piece of china, $1. I'll show you the mark. 
So you can see it. Theodore Haviland for Limoges, sitting right there at the bottom of the shelf, away from everything. And these pieces resell. That's right. They actually have people who are paying $55 to match this pattern for one plate. So you're paying a buck and you're getting 55 times what that fuck is showing you. So $55 for this one plate. Characteristic late 1880s, early 1890s plate by Theodore Haviland. You gotta look twice. There's more to come from Glastonbury, Connecticut.